Right. Greetings, unexplainers. Welcome to um, an extra episode of Mark's Unexplained World. Today I'm going to give you something a little bit different. This is the first time I've done this. Uh, I'm actually going to interview a beautiful young lady called, and if I see her name properly, Tilly Treadwell. Tilly, how are you? Oh, hello, Mark. I am doing very well, but even better now that I'm with you, darling. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, and thank you for the very nice introduction. <laughs> You're both welcome. <laughs> thank you for having me. It's no problem at all. Um, I've watched some of your uh, your podcasts, and um, I've listened to some of them. They are absolutely fascinating. Um uh, yeah, from the from your Tolpa work and listening to some of your experiences, I know I feel pretty sure uh, some of my audience would love to hear some of them as well. Um, but let's first of all, to those very few people that don't know you, how about <laughs> <laughs> just give yourself a bit of an introduction? Just tell us a little bit about yourself. You got it. So, my dears, my name is Tilly Treadwell. I am a now retired professional paranormal investigator, investigator and a now retired <clears throat> professional paranormal counselor, as well as a lifelong experiencer of perhaps the unexplained, although maybe I've gathered a few answers over the years. <laughs> and um, I consider myself a quantum theorist as well as a quantum storyteller you could say mm -hmm. and i think that that about covers it without me launching into a deeper history personally but i have a feeling that you and i are going to get quite well into that later on oh i hope so i do hope so um so when you say what was it quantum quantum mm -hmm. paranormal Okay, I'm going to be one of the ignorant ones. Can, can you can you give us a bit more details on that? I've not heard that phrase before. No. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, which portion exactly are you referring to? There are Anything portions. Really there are portions, are there? <laughs> um, <laughs> tell you what, make it easy. Uh, give us the layman's terms. You know the um, the easy oh, okay. ones. Okay. Okay. Well, perhaps. Couching it in a bit more of a storytelling aspect would be mm. better. Okay. So I have, from the age of, I would say, around infancy, been experiencing high strangeness events and encounters with non-human people and uh, pre-birth memories, it seems. Mm. But, of course, I always put on the disclaimer, maybe I'm crazy, so don't listen to me, probably. <laughs> Oh, that comes with the territory, I'm afraid. Perhaps, perhaps. We're all mm. mad here. Absolutely. But as far as, as having been a paranormal investigator, I worked with the Catholic Church for a short while in what, I, what I've come to, to call um, an exorcism light team. Oh. And mm. I have two years of clinical mental health training and so I was helping to vet families for for care and exorcisms for the Catholic Church as well as investigating the wild woods up in Ohio all around the state with that team and I took private cases was a, a tarot and oracle card reader and a healer and then after all of these, I moved on to work more recently over the past year with Tim Swartz. Uh, you all may know him from Ancient Aliens and yeah, The Unexplained. Mm, mm. Yeah. So he and I are good friends, and he helped me start this show. And so this is where we get into what I was calling quantum storytelling and being a quantum what I call theorist. Mm. Quantum in this usage just means more subtle, the more subtle realm, the more subtle scientific realm. So thinking in terms of spooky action at a, di at a distance, like uh, Einstein had proposed, 
and quantum entanglement, string theory. There's, yeah. there's a lot to it. And mm. I put all of these aspects into my own storytelling and more because I do believe that it is all related. And I believe that what is called magic is not actually magic in the way that human people traditionally think of it. I see it as all being quite scientific and predictable in many ways. That's just been my experience anyways. And, um, yeah, I, I blend that all together, hopefully in ways that will inspire and delight other people. And no one can see me right now, but typically I'm dressed up <laughs> really, <laughs> really <laughs> fancily yeah. and I have nice backdrops mm, and do absolutely. professional makeup and whatnot. But I hope that everyone would, um, indulge me in checking out perhaps some of the content that you had mm. mentioned because Absolutely. that will give them a far more rounded understanding of mm. what I'm just plainly talking about here, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I agree. And um, I, I have to uh, back Tilly up here. I mean, I've watched some of her shows and her, her costumes alone um, make you want to watch. They're, she really does go to, go to town on making it look... Um, Nice to look at, if that's a right thing to say. But no, no, I, I can honestly say that. Um, you were saying that, um, that... Now, I've dealt a lot in the past with what they call liminal spirits. Yeah. Um, is, is is that a similar sort of thing to what you're talking about? Um, uh, the Well, what's the word you used? Um, the, Non-human people? Yeah, yeah, that sort of thing. Is, is, is there a connection between that and you working with people on uh, with not human people as liminal would you say uh, is there a connection at all oh absolutely mm. in my experience and opinion there are massive connections between liminality yeah. and non-human people and then mm. also liminality non-human people and non-human people's interactions with human people mm. so um I believe that liminality is actually one of the determining factors yes. for paranormal experiences because when human people experience liminality, there is typically an element of high emotional content yes. and yes. there's a lot of energetic output, which yeah. calls forth non-human people. And it can be, it can be in a very healthy way, mm. such as, spirits and fairies etc coming around during the holidays and essentially joining say a human christmas party or hiding in or around the christmas tree and just wow. being there and sometimes there can be some great interactions that come out of that or it can be extremely unhealthy so um there there have been many cases that i have worked in the past where People who were experiencing severe, perhaps, alcoholism, drug abuse, homelessness, right, and right. domestic violence, yes. they were being haunted and everything was being made worse by these non-human people who were attracted by that vibration in order to feed off of the energy that yes. was being yeah. put out. Does that mm. make sense? That makes perfect sense. Um, uh, obviously... This isn't about me. It's a, about your good self. But I've actually. Oh, um, I'm so <laughs> what you say. <laughs> uh, all right. I myself. Uh, uh, fair enough. I've, I've got so many questions. They're all coming at once. But I'll try and uh, oh. <laughs> stretch myself out a bit. Um, I have uh, had similar experiences myself. Uh, I've been the victim of um, uh, a dark environment, and I've also seen and and from that uh, became an entity, uh, which haunted the house, if you like. Uh, but I've also helped other people um, who have ha had something in their house that they can't explain. And I've yeah. found out that there's been a lot more uh, be behind the uh, behind their curtains uh, than just this dark entity. This dark entity is feeding off what was going on yeah. and what was happening within the family. Um, and interesting, uh, the other liminal things I dealt with is um, somebody once said to me, there is a liminal... Um, uh, barrier around a forest and i've wondered what on earth are they talking how could it be and it made sense afterwards because the liminal area of a forest is where all your uh your, your small cryptids are like your fairies and your, yeah. your, your 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 goblins and things like that so that i also found quite interesting um so uh, on one of your um 
your podcasts I watch, you talk about, I'm, obviously you, you can't name names and uh, I, I understand that, but you talk about one particular <laughs> family that you had, uh, I was fascinated by this, but I think you had to say, and that's all for this week. And I was, huh, what? But what? So, <laughs> just as it got interesting, sorry. But um, what Aww. it did fascinate me, that particular um, event uh, can you go into more details on that? Obviously, you only go into details that you feel happy with. So, um, so what actually happened? Um, can, I, I would like to say I have to be mindful of the time on of my course. own show because my editing software, it only allows me to put out a 90-minute video at a time. And that's okay, okay. typically why I cut it off. No, oh, yeah. No, I understand that. It's just me so. taking the mickey. Don't worry. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's yeah, I, I, I'm happy to go into into whatever detail that you you would like. Could you ask me some uh, specific questions about it? Um, well, I suppose the first one is what happened. <laughs> <laughs> are, you talking, are you talking about the Karen and Bob story? Yes, that's the one. That's the one. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right. So the basic gist is that I had been assigned a case through the Catholic Church. Um, this family was reporting a lot of dark activity around the home, items being taken off the walls, thrown across the room. No one was being attacked, but Mm -hmm. there was a lot of intimidating activity going on around the house. And it had been going on for about six months, if I remember properly, before they decided that they needed to get the Catholic Church involved. There were strange knocks and noises and slamming of doors and strange breezes, cold spots, hot spots. There there was almost everything that you could imagine. Right. And it had gotten to the point where sometimes they would hear someone whispering across the room. And even though they couldn't make out what was being said, it was it was at that point enough, I yeah. believe, just to get them yeah. to take it seriously. Yes. Because holy water wasn't working, uh, they, <laughs> I remember the, the mom had like a, a spray bottle of holy water and she would just like walk around misting the air and the walls and, and the carpets and whatnot. Grief. And nothing, nothing was working. Prayers weren't working. Nothing was working. So when I and my team were assigned, the way that it was it was structured, I was there to be the intuitive co-lead. So mm. um, I've always been what people would perhaps consider an energetic empath. Right, yes. And, yes, so I'm typically able to see, sense, hear, feel lots of things, mm. energy. I, I get energetic and uh, informational drops from many different types of, of peoples and perhaps God mm. spirit. I don't know exactly all the different classifications, but there is that. And so they wanted me to go in there with the rest of the team and see if I could pick up on anything. At this point, I had structured my own portion of the investigation like this. I go in and I would not talk to the family or the alleged yep. victim yep. about yep. anything paranormal yep. until I got to vet them uh, mentally, emotionally, socially. Mm. And so I would spend a lot of time just having what seemed to the people as mundane conversation, but it was not, not at not, all. I understand. I understand. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes this type of vetting would go on for hours. Sometimes it was days. Sometimes it was weeks. Sometimes it could be up to a month. It Mm. really just depended on the Mm. allegations and the, oh, all of the case details that I was told initially and then what I was picking up upon first meeting. So there Mm. was a lot of variability. And then after I would talk to the people upon first meeting, I would make some type of an excuse to go and wander around the person's house, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. And they would think that I was there just to out the demon or something, but I wasn't. I was yeah. there to get the other side of the story, if possible. Yes, yes of course. And to 
to to discern the state of the home to look for any green flags or red flags mm. such as like is the house clean is it dirty uh are there signs perhaps of alcoholism or drug use or mental illness yes. lying around physical yeah. items that i can see mm. and then also that allows me private time to talk to whatever or whomever else is there because a lot of these times the non-human person wouldn't come out and be honest in front of the human person or family there's a lot right. of animosity usually between human people and these non-human people okay. um so i would i would go and talk to the non-human person and just say hey i'm not here to cause you any trouble i'm just here to understand both sides and see if we can work something out and even the so-called demons would respond very well to this approach and they would talk to me in every single case. Yes. And interestingly in every single case by the time I retired I had come to the conclusion that um every negative paranormal case it is not actually a paranormal case it is a mental health case with yes. a paranormal aspect. Yeah. Yeah. So with this context, this is how I structured the in the uh investigation into Karen and Bob's case. The family consisted of Karen, the mother, Bob, the father, and then I will not I don't even give a name no, to fine. this to teenage boy, just yeah. there was a, a teenage boy there in the home as well. Sure, sure. So they have reported all of this activity to the Catholic Church. And we're begging for help. And from how Karen and Bob described it to the Catholic Church, they alleged that this just completely started out of nowhere and mm. that they were completely innocent and had nothing to do with anything. Okay. Well, yes. So mm. I found out from the non-human person. I, I went and talked to the non-human person privately and they told me he she they it i like to call this person he so i'll start using that now okay very masculine energy in in my experience he right. essentially told me um that he's not there because of anything personal and he doesn't care about their religion he doesn't respect their religion it's all just bunk anyways and he said that he's there because they are putting out the proper vibration for him to feed off of. Yeah. So, mm. yes, he said that the only way he's going to go away and find someone else is if they completely change their their lives. And mm. I didn't understand at the time because it was my first time meeting these people and for all intents and purposes they seemed like a um, the ideal American family. Yeah. So I, I like to say when I when I came in, Karen had baked cookies. So she had a nice little little tray of cookies out. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. So she'd made us some some actually pretty delicious chocolate chip <laughs> cookies. <laughs> right. And so um, we were just chatting and, and nibbling at these cookies, and then uh, I went off and and had my my own meeting with the non human person after a few hours. Right. And. When I came back, I, I was very young at this point, in my early 20s, and I made the critical mistake <laughs> of spilling the beans <laughs> in right. front of my whole team and in front of, of Bob, who didn't know what Karen was up to. Oh, so, right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was quite the scene. So. I didn't understand. I thought we were there to, you know, help this family. I thought mm. we were all just going to be open and completely honest at this point. Yes. So the non-human person, he had told me that Karen was a notorious um, drunk, like, day drinker and drunk driver there during the day as well. Oh. And that he had been at this for several years. And then he told me that that Bob absolutely hates his his wife. He hates his life. He hates his job, and right. he hates being, yeah, a father and a provider under those circumstances. So he was just miserable, and he'd often come home, 
angry in a rage and just mm. like take it out yeah. around the house and whatnot. Mm. And then this, this poor teenage kid, there was nothing at all against against the, the poor boy. It was just it was extra food source essentially. So right, teenager as well. I, exactly, yeah. exactly. I think yeah. he was like fourteen at the time. Oh, so he ideal. was, you know, right at that peak. Yeah. Um, I came, I came back and I, I started in, I, I was very innocent at that time. I didn't right. understand the right. power of the human ego and human emotions and stuff. Mm. So I just laid it out there and Karen was flabbergasted at first. And so I had started to talk about, um, what Bob was doing wrong or, you know, doing to attract yeah. this type of person and yeah. Karen lost her ever loving mind. She started Blimey. screaming at me, uh, mm -hmm. insulting me. She picked up uh, a, a heavy wooden cruci uh, crucifix from, I believe it was, it was the counter of the wall, but you know, it, this was, was several years ago. Yeah, and to sure. be honest, it was pretty traumatizing. So I don't remember it, but she snatched it from one of the surfaces and wound up throwing, throwing at me at, from across, That's across great. the room. And yeah. we left. Immediately, of course. of course, and yeah. the boy, the boy had been afraid at this point. You know, his mom losing his mind, his dad sitting at the table, hanging his head in shame. So the boy, uh, before we left, he gave us some validation. He's he said, "Mom, you know it's all true." Wow. And I, I never, I never got to understand exactly how the boy knew all of this, but he knew mm. apparently. Yeah. Yeah. And so she had started to rage at him. This, this poor boy was just standing over in the kitchen corner, you know, oh, just in this grief. quiet voice said, Mom, you know it's true. Yeah. Started raging at him to not tell family secrets and stuff like that. So sure. on the way out, the non-human person approached me and, and he just said, this is the problem. I'm not the problem. I'm here because they're the problem. Yes. And, yes. and I, I, I told uh, this this non-human person that I see his point and I agree with him. Yes, yes, of course. That's right. Great. So when when my co-lead had reported back to the church, everything was marked down, and they were uh, the family was kicked out of the program. Oh, right. For right. yeah, for the for the psychic help and whatnot, and they. Yeah. From what I remember vaguely, I do believe that they they stopped providing resources to this family and gave them like a, a requirement to go seek mental help. Yeah, I mean it's it's, it's a it's a question of uh, you can't help somebody who doesn't help themselves, isn't it? Really, mm -hmm. uh, at the mm -hmm. end of the day, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah. I'm sure people are listening to that are equally stunned as I am. You know, I, I presume, uh, uh, was, was psychically, you must have been quite drained. I mean, I know obviously you were all absolutely. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I had to quit after, oh. after a few years of doing this, this type of work in general because yeah, I got very right. ill. Yeah. From it, being it's, so very drained. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Go, go on. Do, do go on. Oh, that's okay. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> Time delay. Oh. <laughs> Oh, good. Um, yeah, so Edgar Casey, it said that he passed away from overworking himself in in these manners. Yeah, and and I came very close to that as well. And I I have a bit of a, a different genetic profile, um, right. so I have to be extremely careful because my body is very delicate. Yes, of course, of course. So wow. so unfortunately, I did have to to retire, but. On my way out, I had realized every human person that I was assigned to and every family, the non-human people were right. All yes. of them were incredibly dishonest. The, the yes. human people were incredibly dishonest. They yeah. were living double lives, and all of them had serious issues with, as we discussed, yes. negative well, liminality. It's like they're trying to blame someone else all the time instead that's, of actually yeah, facing up to the problem it. themselves. Uh, fair enough, mm -hmm. there's... Um, uh, I can't remember the guy who who wrote the book now. Uh, I'm terrible with names, I really am. But um, there's what there's one guy who wrote a book called Paracutics, 
and in it it says like check sheets and also like forms that you can photocopy and it does talk about there about medicines and mental health so basically you'd sit oh. down with somebody and you'd go through this form and uh he actually, he actually says that you need to be very careful because if see, people see you go into somebody's property with a lot of flight cases, because that would be all the equipment, you know, um, they don't want the neighbourhood to know what's going on in their house. But I think it's it's interesting that this, this form, he says you should talk to the people first before you should even consider paranormal, you know. That ask, is uh, uh, yeah. Ask the awkward questions. You know, if they throw you out of the house straight away, then okay, then you know not to <clears throat> not not to bother with them anymore. But um, but yeah, it is yeah. a page of mental health and tablets and pills and things like that before you even go anywhere near exactly. the mental health. Yeah, um, oh, I, exactly. Uh, it's absolutely right because I do know of mediums that have gone into somebody's house and they've gone, oh yes, there's something dark here. I need to I need to get some holy water and splash it around the room. And that's not the way to do it because all you're doing is you're you're helping that family hide their own issues. That's right. That's um, right. And that that's been my experience. I've done a couple of house clearings myself, and uh, but mine have not been as involved as yours have. Mine have very much been like house cleansing and things like that. When some before somebody's moved in, they've asked me to um, go around with the sage and give it a cleansing, and uh, they've all sort of said, "Oh wow, it feels fresher. It feels nicer." Yeah. And uh, that's that's. I mean. I've helped people who have had attachments, but um, but as for clearing a haunted house and things like that, that's uh, I tend to leave that to the big yeah. boys until I'm more experienced. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For, for myself, I found that working from the inside out is best. Yeah. So mm. uh, I, I quit the Catholic church team mm. because I came to the opposite conclusions as my teammates and as the church mm. and the Catholic church, at least the one that I was working with were incredibly entitled. They were trying to do oh, right. all of these, these house clearings and these land clearings. And they would flat out mm. say, we deserve it because we are God's people. We are chosen people and we are right. better than, yeah. Right. And it really, really upset me yes, because all of the non-human people that I had met, whether they were the land guardians mm. or the so-called poltergeists and the so-called demons, yeah. they had treated me far better than any human person, yeah. whether it was the team mm. or the church or the, the, the families and so-called alleged victims and stuff like that. So I just found that I, I morally disagreed with everything that they stood for, and I quietly quit mm. after a while. Because I was tired of being uh, being subjugated in that way. I just mm. didn't agree. Uh, so, I, I agree yeah. with you. I agree with you. I think what's happened is, and this is no disrespect to any uh, paranormal investigators out there that use equipment, but there was a time, once, once upon a time, when uh, um, if you were going to go ghost hunting or, or, or whatever, uh, you had your medium, and your medium was the one that you relied on. And I think what's happened yeah. is, is now where there's so many bits of equipment out there, and there's so many apps for it, I think a lot of the paranormal yes. investigators say, I don't need a medium. I've got my obvious here or my my radio that's broken and um, bits and pieces like that um which is is fine and like i say i don't mean any disrespect to any uh ghost hunters okay. out there but uh did, did you ever have any problems with the catholic church doing the, the the stuff you did because a lot of churches over here i mean i've said i mean i've got into churches old and new and there, there's lots of spirits in there and things like that but when you talk about it to some of the priests or vicars uh, they're very oh no 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 you shouldn't do that did you ever have any problems like that i mean how did the catholic church see it sure sure so it was a covert project oh, i right. wasn't supposed to talk about it right. outside of the team hmm. and outside of meeting with the families no, that's fair and enough. the church itself, yeah. yeah. And they, because of their attitude, um, as long as I didn't voice my opinions that I agreed with the non-human people, everything was smooth. Okay. I tried. I tried once. I think it was like three months in or so mm. to tell my co-lead. At that time, he was he was a good friend of mine. Right. And. He, he was my co-lead, so hmm. I trusted him 
And Mm. I naively tried to tell him to be honest about what I felt and all of the information that I had been told and my observations about morality concerning the so-called victims, et cetera. And he, he became a person at that moment that I didn't recognize. He started quoting the Bible and Uh, saying essentially that Mm. we are the superior race and whatnot. And so I was, I was very, very put off by it. I I didn't talk about this anymore Mm. with anyone. I, Mm. I just, I kind of said, Oh, I must be mistaken. You know, because back when I was younger, someone's passion, they could be passionately wrong, passionately delusional. Yeah, if, 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 I didn't, sorry, go on. Okay, I, I didn't quite, I didn't quite understand because I was very, this, and this is part of my neurodivergence. I couldn't understand that just because someone is passionate, it doesn't make them right, even if, they have other people backing them up, et cetera, mm. even if they state their opinions as facts. So I was very naive in that time, and I just didn't quite get it because okay. I had been okay. gaslit my whole life. Right. So right. Uh, in, in 2020, I was formally diagnosed as being extremely neurodivergent. Right. Okay. And with this, with this diagnosis, it's very similar to autism. Yes. But there are some key differences in that I have extremely low ego content and extremely low emotional content. That, so, yeah, I can see that help. Sorry, I've interrupted you, but I can see that helping okay. as a medium because one rule I was always taught as a medium is don't use your ego, use how you feel. Yes. So yes, I can see yes. that being quite an advantage if there is any advantages to uh, to, um, to to your good self, of course. But, um, yeah, sorry, I've interrupted. Do go on. <laughs> no, you're right. But I, um, I, I wound up just quietly quitting over time mm. because I, I realized that, unfortunately, I was really surrounded by people mm. who did not make logical sense to me. And then... Right. Uh, when I got into integration therapy again, because yeah. I've been in integration therapy almost my whole life, because I don't, it's not that I, I, I it's not that I'm like mean spirited or anything like that. It's just that I don't understand how most people work here because of my neurological differences and whatnot. Sure. sure. So. I got back into therapy to continue to learn how to work with people more. And my therapist, she had been a therapist for longer than I have been alive. And she flat out told me Mm. that I am the kind of person who should never, ever, ever get involved with any person who is an emotional thinker or an emotional reasoner. And she finally was able to help me understand Mm. that most human beings, they think and reason emotionally. Yes. And yes. Yes. And she, she flat out told me that most human beings are delusional. Yes. I agree with that. (laughs) I agree with that. Yeah. My own experience has told me that. Exactly. And so this was like the, the missing piece for me. And I cut out everyone who was unhealthy for me. Right. Because I couldn't be myself around mm. any of these people. And now my circle is very small. Right. But the people that I have, like yourself, hmm. we we have a, a lovely, tightly knit circle. Yeah, absolutely. And they understand me. They're very mm. logical. Mm. And we can talk about things without anyone getting upset. It's hmm. wonderful. Absolutely. It's 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 there's a phrase I've used, I, I live on, it, um, it's a David Icke phrase, actually. I keep using his name when we have conversations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what is it? The uh, the biggest prison we live in is the fear of what other people think. And I, I live yeah. by that quote. I think it's a, 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 a when you do get part, over that stage, over that, it is quite um, a euphoric feeling, if there's such a word. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you feel really good about yourself because all of a sudden you're saying, this is me. 
And I'm so pleased to be part of your small circle as well. I find that very flattering. I, I, I really do. Um, but yeah, um, We've talked about all sorts of things over the last week. I mean, we've only known each other about a week or so, we? a couple of weeks. But I do actually feel like I've known you most of my life because I can sit and talk about weird stuff and you just agree and, or, or disagree, however, because you know I'm not going to, my feelings aren't going to be hurt by it. And uh, I think that's yeah. a rare thing. And I think uh, I'm, I'm very flattered that uh, you feel I'm part of your small circle. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic to know you too. It has been an absolute pleasure. Mm. And something else that I, yeah. that may be helpful for your, for your guests or not your guests, I'm sorry, no, for your sorry. audience to know mm. part of my neurodivergence is that I do extremely well in one-on-one relationships, forming deep, deep bonds with people mm. and details. And this is kind of part of the autism part of my diagnosis. So I'm extremely detailed and empathetic mm. in some ways, but also very strangely emotionally detached. It's, it's, it's kind of tricky. And with what I was diagnosed with, there's not even a formal name for it yet. There, there is right. a general title, mm. but not exactly a formal diagnosis yet. All I can say is that neurodivergent with autistic traits but hopefully it'll be in the next dsm <laughs> well, yeah, yeah but i, mean, I, I, I think the, the good thing is, is the fact it's it's been spotted it's been noted and someone somewhere exactly. is taking it seriously um the mm-hmm. name the name calling i think will happen later on when they finally find a good name for yeah. it they'll probably someone somewhere will have a big meeting about it or something like that i suppose oh, yeah. um uh, the other good thing is uh, your your counselor is, is that right your counselor telling counselor, you to, therapist, yeah whatever. therapist um you're empathic so to be surrounded by people who are emotionally charged that must have been quite draining for you as well because I'm empathic and one of the reasons why I <laughs> I've only got a small circle of friends is because so many people uh, as you were saying earlier are driven by emotion you know I do well I don't struggle so much when I'm doing events a, me, a, a medium of events because my spirit guys and I know how to home into it now I know how to block those sort of things. Yeah. but you'll never see me at a party or a or, or a, a, a big gathering of hundreds of people because I can't handle it. I can't handle all the all the emotions that are coming from people. So I suppose that must have helped you uh, in that way as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. And I I do perform, and sometimes I go to parties personally. Mm. However, I'm extremely careful about the parties that I go to and the people mm. that I am around there because I I am drained a lot by mm. social interaction. And then if if someone around me is an emotional thinker. I don't typically have a lot to talk to them about on any deep level Mm -hmm. because they can't understand where I'm coming from. And I can't quite understand personally where they're coming from. It's very difficult. And two, something, something that's been bothering me lately about the paranormal sphere. Mm. I've noticed that in my opinion, there are a lot of narcissistic people oh, and a lot absolutely. of gems. It seems polarized. Absolutely. I mean, I've had my own uh, my own uh, uh, thing of trolls and goodness knows what else. But I always say, uh, <laughs> this might even attract trolls yet, who knows. But I always say, you know you've done it right if you've been trolled. You know you've yeah, done something right. That. Mm-hmm. That's the way I, t- that to me is the way to think of it. Yeah, if I've been trolled, that means yeah. I've said something right. And I, that's it. I, yeah. I won't go any further with it. They're not worth the hassle. The hassle. But uh, yes. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay. Well, for for me, it's it's been a struggle my whole life. Um, and this is a great example. I'm feeling much better about the situation and whatnot now. Good. By the way. Good. But I had been asked to come on to a massive paranormal network recently, All right. and I was all. It. And this person asked me a plain question over a text text type platform, mm. and I gave them a plain answer. And this person, um, it was just about scheduling. They just asked me like, "When are you free?" So I gave them a date, which was a mm. few days in the future, 
And via text, they told me that I was uh, mistreating them and I was a diva. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, because yeah, okay. <laughs> my, and I sent them, I sent them a screenshot of my of my December. I have interviews every single day, mm. except for the 24th, the 25th, and the 26th. Sometimes yeah. I'm doing two shows a day. <laughs> and typically when people request a call from me, mm. it's going to be like an hour plus, especially we're talking about signing a contract or something. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You're, the, you're, you're probably the, 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 the least diva person I've ever met, to be honest with you. You're very Thank humble. You. If anything, I mean, trying trying to get information out of you. Uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> but no. I, I, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I try. Okay. I try. It, it's an interesting balance to try to be both entertaining mm. and humble at the same time. Yes. And yes. so I just I can't do it though with people who interpret me as a diva without getting to know me. Just because I wear nice makeup and nice clothing, and just because my schedule is full doesn't mean that I'm being disrespectful. Or that I think that I'm better than anyone else. No, 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 no. I can't help it that you got to the table late, sir. Absolutely. absolutely. Calm That's down. It. Calm down. Count to ten. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. And then, and then I had one video call with this guy after the, all the pressure he put on me. And he spent the whole time telling me how he literally does not give a F-U-C-K about what anyone else thinks or feels. It was the most uncomfortable, narcissistic, really? nerve-wracking call I've ever had. I was sick at the time. It made me sicker from yeah. the stress of dealing with the person. And really? um, I just, I couldn't do it. So I told him that I quit already. I hadn't even signed the contract and I just told him no and I blocked him. I and yeah, I told that, him not to never contact me again. Yeah, that's the yeah. right thing to do. That's the only thing to do, to be honest with you. Yeah. You know, but so uh, I, I've had uh, I've had experiences like that. Yeah, yeah. My entire life, oh, and I'm man. honestly, I'm just very tired. I'm yes, very of course. tired. Of course, but I mean, my, my ad advice uh, is don't let it stop you from doing what you enjoy. I mean, I've got to be I honest. Know. I've had times when I've just wanted to chuck in the towel. You know, I've said, look, I, I, I'm not alive for this sort of thing. But then I think, yeah. what? I just go and I, I, I don't know. I have a beer or something, and I, I take a few days to to dwell on it, <laughs> and then um, <laughs> yeah. I just say, you know, what the hell? I'm not going to let them get to me like that. So uh -huh. I hope you never give up what you're doing. I really do. You, you must keep doing what you're doing because out of the, out of the, you know, the thousands and thousands of people that may listen to you, there's what two or three and uh, it, it's wrong that those you, you know that all those thousands of people are going to get upset or, or miss out on, on your gift just because two or three people don't like it yeah i agree, um, but, I agree. Uh, but yeah anyway yeah. We're, we're digressing slightly <laughs> okay uh right well I'm, I'm going to uh say we're a little bit out of time but it has been fantastic having you on here, uh, Trilly. I am so grateful that you came on because I know you're a very busy lady. Uh, I, I am so flattered and I'm sure um, uh, my audience has been fascinated by what you've been telling us. Um, guys, if you do get the chance to go on YouTube, you'll, you'll, actually, no, I'll let, you, I'll let you do the talking. That's what you're here for. Uh, <laughs> whereabouts can we see your beautiful face and your wonderful videos? Well, thank you so much, dear. Uh, my YouTube channel is simply The Weird Walk Home, and that is my that is my only content platform. Um, every week, I do release a standalone television style episode, audio visual, and I conduct interviews all the time now, <laughs> and I'm introducing reviews and recommendations of other people's work as well so there's a lot to be discovered there and i hope mm. that you'll enjoy it absolutely and i i can highly recommend it i'm not just saying that because she's here looking at me but i can highly recommend um going over to her channel um and viewing her content it is fascinating stuff because what i've found not only does she deal with the paranormal side but she also looks at the um the connection or some of the connection between what she's um talking about to mental health and i watched her episode on tulpas the other day and i learned more in the half hour um watching her video than i did i mean i've got books on tulpas and i know what a tulpa is but 
when I didn't realise the connection between the tulpa and the possible links with uh, mental health. And I found that, for, I mean, I've got to watch it again because some of the words are a bit long for me. So I'll probably have yes. to watch it again. Yes, yes. I but for that. No, 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 not at all, not at all. I always think if, you, if you've if you made someone, if, sorry, if you've made uh, a video or, or a programme and people are going away reading up on it, you've done something right. Ah. Yeah, that's the way I look at it. If I'd done something and people... I love it. I mean, I don't know how many people listen to my podcast, two or three a week. I don't know. But if they, when I get messages to say, I didn't know about that particular incident, I was, I, I bought a book on it and things like that, then I know I've done something right. And I think that is exactly the same case for yourself. I would highly recommend, hopefully she'll, uh, she may do them audio and put them onto um, uh, other platforms like Podbean or things like that. But that's obviously her decision. But uh, I want to say thanks again, Telly. Uh, I'm so grateful that you came on because this is me out of my comfort zone as well because it's the first interview I've ever conducted. So thank you for giving me that opportunity. So, guys, um, I will be back with my next podcast next week. Um, it is all about, if I remember rightly, it is about... It, I've forgotten what it's about already. That's not good, is it? But anyway, my next podcast comes out on Monday. Um, oh, yes, it is about the, the uh, Highway 16 the highway of tears so all those of you who live near that um either live near that area i'm sure you'd like to give it a listen or anybody else around the world so a big thanks to everyone for listening remember mark's unexplained world because there's more to the paranormal than meets the third eye and remember guys keep it real because being real is better than being perfect <laughs>